Jai Hind and a very good morning to all. A presentation from Subharti Dental College and Hospital Meerut. As stated by Victor Hugo, a paradigm of French literature to put everything in balance is good, to put everything in harmony is better. Likewise, in the field of dentistry, a proper equilibrium has to be maintained between the operative dentistry and the surrounding soft tissues. In our day-to-day -day clinical practice, we often come across such clinical scenarios. A deep subgingival caries, cervical abrasion or class 5 caries, subgingival hemorrhage and a fractured line which extends far subgingivally. We may also come across gingival inflammation, clinical attachment loss and bone loss which is clearly seen on intraoral periapical radiographs. But this aspect is overlooked by many of us and which ultimately leads on a detrimental effect on both the restoration as well as the surrounding soft tissues which ultimately affects the prognosis outcome of the final restorations. With this note, I, Dikshant Gupta from the Department of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics will be presenting my integrated seminar on the topic Gingival Tissue Management in Restorative Dentistry. Covering my seminar under the following headings. Starting with Peridontium. Exactly what is Peridontium? The word Peridontium is arrived or derived from a Greek word which splits peridontium into two parts. Peri means around and odons meaning tooth. Literally meaning the something which is surrounding the tooth. Peridontium consists of two parts, the gingiva and the attachment apparatus. The gingiva consists, covers the underlying soft tissues and protects them from the injury and provides the aesthetics. Whereas the attachment apparatus consists of alveolar bone, cementum followed by a periodontal ligament. Gingiva covers the alveolar processes of the jaw and surrounds the neck of the tooth. Anatomically speaking, it is of three types, marginal gingiva, attached gingiva and interdental gingiva. Gingival sulcus is a shallow crevice or space around the tooth bounded by surface of the tooth on the one side and epithelium lining on the another side. It is V-shaped and barely permits the entrance of periodontal probe. What is the need for gingival tissue management in restorative dentistry? To prevent damage to the soft tissue during the cavity preparation, restoration, finishing and polishing by widened gingival sulcus. Easy removal of cement without tissue damage, blending of the restoration with unprepared tooth surface and it indirectly prevents marginal caries plaque accumulation and marginal gingivitis. Moving on to the indications of gingival tissue management. First is deep subgingival caries, cervical abrasions and ab fractions, a subgingival fractured tooth and a presence of gingival polyp. Further indications are severely attrited teeth, subgingival hemorrhage, to make a good subgingival finish line for aesthetic reasons and finally to record a subgingival prepared finish line. On the other hand, the contraindications contra include very poor oral gingival health, bleeding gums or we can say gingiva is inflamed and associated bone loss. So there are certain key points which needs to be taken into consideration while restoration in gingival health. Biotype needs to be evaluated, preservation of peridontium, a very gentle tissue displacement and do not violate the biological width. The preservation of peridontium includes two aspects. First is the periodontal evaluation with the help of visual examination and the measurement of sulcus depth. The second parameter includes radiographic examination which includes periapical followed by bite wing radiographs. Gingival biotype is referred to as the thickness of gingiva in the fascio-palatal direction. Two types, thick biotype and thin biotype, will be explaining one by one. In thick biotype, the gingiva is thick. It, the gingival margin is usually located upon the enamel surface. 
a greater probing depth is present and at last no bony dehiscence or fenestrations are present. And thin biotype, the covered attached gingiva is very minimal. This gingival biotype is often seen in patients presenting bony dehiscence or fenestrations and probing depth is very less. The gingival margin is usually located at cemento enamel junction. The concept of biological width was given by Gergulo et al. in the year 1961, which states that dimension of soft tissues which is attached to the portion of the tooth coronal to the crest of the alveolar bone. It provides a natural seal around the tooth that protects the alveolar bone from the infection and the disease. Clinically speaking, the importance of biological width a minimum width of 3 mm must be maintained from the preparation margin of any restoration to the alveolar bone. This implies that adequate biological width is maintained even when the restoration margins are placed 0.5 mm within the gingival sulcus. What is bone sounding? Bone sounding is done under local anesthesia that is we probe the bone we probe the bone to a sufficient level Subtract the sulcus depth from the resulting measurement and if the distance is less than 2 mm at one or more locations, the violation of biologic width is almost confirmed. To further reconfirm or to gain more accuracy and efficacy, bone sounding should be done on adjacent or inter-arch healthy individual tooth so as to get a correct idea. Radiographic interpretation can identify interproximal violations of biological width. Moving on to the methods of gingival tissue management, broadly classified by different authors into different types by Marzuk, Tillman, Schellenberg, and Gilmore. Methods for gingival tissue management are broadly classified as retraction or displacement that comes under non-surgical, removal that comes under surgical. Retraction or displacement further includes mechanical and chemomechanical. Under mechanical methods, rubber dam, gingival protector, matrices, wedges, cotton twills wrapped with ZOE, and the lastly, the most commonly used retraction cords. On the other hand, chemicomechanical includes retraction cord dipped with a hemostatic agent, infusion technique, and the newer methods or the recent advancements. Whereas the surgical methods include scalpels, a very conventional method, rotary curettage, also called as gingetage, electrosurgery, and lasers. What is the goal of gingival tissue displacement? It reversibly displaces the gingival tissue in a lateral direction to access the caries or defect located cervically for its removal and restoration as well as to flow bulk of the low viscosity impression material into the widened gingival sulcus and capture the marginal details required for indirect restorations. Moving on to the mechanical methods. Here the first comes the rubber dam that was introduced by S.C. Barnum in the year 1864. Most appropriate of all the isolation devices in the presence of supra gingival margins. Heavy and extra heavy rubber dam sheets with different dimensions and thickness are used in dentistry. Rubber dam with proper interceptal dimensions are used for quadrant isolation where preparations do not extend far subgingivally. Rubber dam is used mostly in the cases where there is a class 5 restoration and restoration has to be done. And after restoration, rubber dam is also used or in place for finishing and polishing of the final restoration. These are the different types of clamp series that are available. For example, cervical retracting clamps. This is having movable blades which aids in gingival tissue retraction. Brinker's tissue retractors are very soft untampered clamps mostly used in anterior region. Impression with rubber dam is a great task. Most likely it is impossible. But with impressions can be taken with modified trays along with the rubber dam, that is if rubber dam is still in place, if the bows and wings of the clamp are blocked out. Next comes the gingival protector. A crescent shaped tip on an adjustable ball joint 
attached to a metal handle. It is usually displays soft tissues to protect the gingiva from rotary instruments during tooth preparation and finishing. Copper band and tube impression was introduced by John J. Luca in the year 1959, also referred to as or named as Page and Cope's method. A copper band filled with impression material is used to carry the impression material as well as to displace the gingiva to expose the finish line. Impression compound or elastomeric impression materials can be used for the procedure. Matrices displace the gingiva and rubber dam away from the cavity margins during introduction of the restorative material. Matrices with gingival extension can also be used when placing interproximal restorations subgingivally. Wedges are placed interproximally to mechanically depress the gingiva, thus providing retraction of the interdental gingiva. It protects the gingiva from unexpected trauma during cavity preparation, finishing and polishing of the final restoration. Cotton twills are mixed into the zinc oxide. Zinc oxide eugenol is mixed into the creamy consistency. Cotton twills rolled into this mass to gain compactness. This prevents the sticking of the pad to the instruments and give ease in handling. Out of all the methods, there are many techniques to achieve gingival retraction. But the most commonly used retraction method is gingival retraction cord. Different types of retraction cords are available that is depending upon the configuration, finish, chemical treatment and number of strands. On the basis of configuration, twisted, knitted and plain retraction cord is available. On the basis of thickness and color, gingival cord is dictated by different numbers and different colors. Black and yellow that is triple zero and zero double zero for interiors. Zero one that is purple and blue for premolars. Green and red that is number two and three for molars or in posterior regions. What are the ideal qualities of a gingival retraction cord? These are well explained by Donovan. The cord should be darker in color to maximize the contrast with the tissues, tooth and the cord. It should be absorbent enough to allow the uptake of wet medicament. Cord pecker is a specially designed instrument that is having its two ends. One end of the cord pecker is serrated and the another end of the cord pecker is smooth. Cord placement is a finest move not a power play. Why this statement is so called, it is because while packing the retraction cord with a cord packer, a maximum force of 0.1 Newton is permissible in the literature. Beyond this force, we will harmfully tend to injure or tear off the gingiva and the oblique fibers or sharpest fibers which are supporting our underlying periodontal ligament. The operating area should be dry. Fluid control should be done with the help of evacuating device and the quadrant containing the prepared tooth is isolated with cotton rolls. Hemorrhage can be controlled by using a hemostatic agent like hemodent liquid. Chemomechanical methods Methods of combining chemical action with pressure packing Enlargement of the gingival sulcus and control of fluid seeping from the gingival sulcus can be achieved with the help of retraction cord dipped in astringent with the help of cotton rolls and cotton pellets. Switching on to the chemicals, classified by Marzuk and Thompson into vasoconstrictors, styptex, chemical cautery and vasoconstrictors. Commonly used chemicals are 8% racemic epinephrine, aluminium chloride, alum, aluminium sulfate and ferric sulfate. Moving on to the mechanism of action, switching to the vasoconstrictors physiologically restrict the blood supply to the area by decreasing the size of blood capillaries, tissue fluid seepage and consequently the size of free gingiva. Epinephrine and non-epinephrine fall under vasoconstrictors. Biological fluid coagulants coagulate the blood and tissue fluids locally, creating a surface layer that is efficient sealant against blood and crevicular fluid seepage. Example is 100% alum, 15 to 25% aluminium chloride, and 15 to 25% tannic acid. 
Last is surface layer tissue coagulants. Coagulates the surface layer and free gingival epithelium, thus creating a temporarily impermeable membrane for the underlying soft tissues. It leads to ulceration, local necrosis, change in the dimension and location of free gingiva. Example is zinc chloride and silver nitrate. Epinephrine in its racemic form acts as a vasoconstrictor on the walls of small arterioles. It is present in alpha and beta form. It produces hemostasis and vasoconstriction which in return presents transitory gingival shrinkage. It acts on two receptors mainly alpha and beta. Epinephrine mainly acts on its potent alpha receptor but sometimes it acts on its beta receptor too. The amount of epinephrine absorption depends mainly upon the degree of exposure of the vascular bed, the time of contact with the tissues and the amount of medication in the cord. The amount of epinephrine absorbed from a 2.5 cm retraction cord during 5 to 15 minutes in gingival sulcus is 71 micrograms. Maximum dose of 200 micrograms for a healthy adult is permissible. And whereas with respect to cardiac patient, only 40, milligr 40 micrograms is permissible. My purpose of explaining this slide was this, that while a retraction cord is being dipped into the epinephrine, care should be taken that how much dose is being transferred to the patient, depending upon his medical conditions. Contraindications include cardiovascular disease, hypertension, epinephrine hypersensitivity, monoamine oxidase inhibitors. If these contraindications are overlooked, it may result to tachycardia, increased blood pressure, anxiety, increased respiration, and post-operative depression, collectively fall under epinephrine syndrome. Switching to the alternative medicaments to epinephrine, these are alum, safe and have fewer systemic side effects than epinephrine, Good tissue recovery can be placed inside the sulcus safely for a period of 20 minutes. Ferric sulfate provides hemostasis on exposed connective tissue. A recommended packing time is 1 to 3 minutes. Aluminium chloride, 5% to 25% in concentration. Precipitate proteins, constricts blood vessel and extract fluid from the tissues. A study was conducted by Lofer et al. on the closure of gingival crevice following gingival retraction for impression making and he concluded aluminium potassium sulfate and aluminium chloride medicated cords are more effective in keeping the sulcus open after clinicians remove the cord than those with epinephrine impregnated cords. Techniques of gingival retraction include single cord technique, double cord technique and infusion technique. In single cord techniques example, this is a tooth preparation and we have to record the impression. A retraction cord is cut with the help of a retraction cord dispenser for a desired length. It is twisted between the middle four fingers of both the hands and between the thumb. It is formed into the shape of U and is looped around the surface of the tooth, all the aspects starting from mesial, distal, buccal and lingual. And the packing of cord starts from the mesial surface and we properly see that cord is thickly tugged into the gingival sulcus. 2 to 3 millimeters cord is left on both the sides so as it helps in the easy removal of the gingival retraction cord after impression making or during the impression making. Double cord technique. I will be explaining this video under a video. Armamentarium required is Here we see that a cord packer is used with its smooth hand to pack a smaller number gingival retraction cord deep into the gingival sulcus. A very gentle force of 0.1 Newton is being applied and the cord packer is directed horizontally in a vertical direction along the long axis of the tooth 
here comes the second retraction cord of a bigger size and in the same manner like previous this retraction cord with a very gentle force is again packed into the gingival sulcus during the this retraction cord after it has been packed into the gingival sulcus is kept in place for 5 to 10 minutes then the first retraction cord is removed which is placed or we say that a bigger or a thicker number of traction cord is removed from the sulcus while the second cord still remains in the place. The major disadvantage for this technique is it has the tendency to recuff or recoil the underlying gingival tissue. Next comes the infusion technique. It is achieved with the help of denta infuser. Here in this GIF what we appreciate is a denta infuser which is attached onto a syringe which is having ferric sulfate as a medicament in it. Ferric sulfate is directly injected and it comes out from the dento infuser brush and is rubbed vigorously on the prepared tooth surface. After some time due to the capillary blood flow and hemostasis is being verified. A knitted retraction cord is soaked in the ferric sulfate further and is packed into the gingival sulcus. Moving on to the recent methods of retraction or we can say cordless retraction methods. First comes the expaxel commercially marketed by acetone. Causes less injury to the gingival tissues. Effective and traumatic circular opening for atraumatic circular opening for natural and aesthetic prosthesis. High precision impression and is very faster. Composition is kaolin water, aluminium chloride, colorant, essential oil of lemon. Mechanism of action includes chemical, mechanical and chemical means thus creates and maintains space in the sulcus due to its viscosity by kaolin and hemostasis due to aluminium chloride. Now I will be demonstrating with the help of a video how is expaxel exactly used. This is a steel cannula which is directed long axis perpendicular to the long axis of the prepared surface of the tooth and slowly inject the material out from the cannula. Now there arises a major question that how do we come to know that whether the material is going into the sulcus or not. When the material goes into the sulcus the gingiva of that area turns white. It indicates that the sufficient material has slowed into the gingival sulcus and this material is applied on all the aspects of the prepared tooth surface and is kept in place for some time as recommended by the manufacturer then washed with the help of a three-way syringe thorough rinsing is very necessary so that anything residual should not interfere with the final impression preparation is dried what we see after a due course of time, after the wait time is over, a perfect widened gingival sulcus which is ready to be recorded with the impression material. A study was conducted by Renuka Prasanna on the evaluation of efficacy of different gingival displacement methods on gingival sulcus width and concluded that gingival displacement paste showed better response in achieving horizontal displacement of the sulcus than gingival retraction cord. Another material is no cord VPS. It contains 15% alum. Material is stiffer enough to derive the wash into the sulcus to displace the gingiva. Comfortable for the patients and is less time consuming. A clinical case where it will be showed that how no cord VPS is being used. Patient presents with maxillary left central fractured incisor requiring a root canal treatment. Post and toe was done as usual method. Preparation is derived with the air syringe. In extreme bleeding cases, pre-treatment is with a hemostatic agent. Rinse and dry before applying no cord wash. Always bleed a new cartridge to get rid of air bubbles and to ensure a proper mix. Syringe no cord wash into the sulcus around the prepared tooth surface, keeping in mind that the tip should be buried into the wash material to avoid the air bubbles. A 
apply a generous amount of cord wash on the prepared and adjacent teeth. When the tray is seated, it will derive the wash material into the gingival sulcus, causing a separation of gingiva from the tooth. Copious amount of wash helps the alum to stop bleeding. Load no cord mega body tray material into the tray. Seat over the unset no cord wash. Up. Seating the tray will derive the no cord wash into the gingival sulcus, displacing the fluids. Have the patient close his mouth until the material is set. When the tissue is inflamed or there is bleeding, the wash with its instringent property is in direct contact with the tissues as it contains 15% alum which constricts the blood capillaries, controls bleeding and displaces the crepicular fluids. Intraoral set time is 3 minutes 45 seconds and final set time is 4 minutes 45 seconds. Remove it from patient's mouth and carefully examine. What we see before retraction and after retraction, a widened gingival sulcus, a clear impression with perfect and accurate margins which is ready and a perfect fitting restoration that is delivered to the patient. Another material that is marketed by Colton Waldent is Magic Foam Coat, a non-hemostatic gingival retraction material. First expanding polyvinyl siloxin material designed for the easy and fast retraction of the sulcus without potentially traumatic packing or pressure. How it works? Let's see that. This is a prepared tooth surface. An anatomic compression cap provided by Colton Waldent. Syringe the material around the prepared tooth surface with the help of an applicator tip. Place the compression cap over the tooth surface and ask the patient to bite with the contradictory tooth upon the compression cap. And after the wait period is over, remove the cap. What we see is widened gingival sulcus and an accurate finish line. A study was conducted by Bayer on the quality of impressions after the use of magic foam cord, a gingival retraction system, a clinical case study of 269 abutment teeth. What he concluded that in the cases of equigingival and subgingival preparation margins, magic foam cord was less traumatic alternative method of gingival retraction. However, there was a deep subgingival margins and a beveled preparation, the material was less effective than the single cord retraction technique. While discussing the different materials by different brand names, 3M is also not behind. It has introduced a retraction capsule, which is very easy to use. Let's see the working of this capsule with the help of a video. It comes in a pre-weighted session. This capsule is applicable with most of the composite, standard composite dispensing guns and pistons. Now bleed this material into the, from the cartridge on a paper pad or a mixing pad so as to ensure that all the air bubbles are lost and carry the tip into the gingival sulcus and carefully start injecting the retraction material paste into the gingival sulcus. This procedure can be performed in the presence of gingival cord or without the presence of gingival cord. After the application of material is complete, we wait for a time period as directed by 3M. After the wait period is over, with the help of a three-way syringe, a gentle air water spray is done so as to remove the material from the gingival sulcus. Dry the preparation. What we see is widened gingival sulcus, 
a completely appreciable a deep subgenital finish line next is the plumber tape or teflon tape a very cheaper material also known as poly tetrafluoroethylene tape has gained a lot of popularity in the dental sector also used as a dental retraction cord during the tooth isolation or during the cementation procedures also coming to the last part of my seminar that is gingival tissue removal with the help of surgical aids the different modalities i will be discussing is first comes the conventional with the help of scalpels next curettage or gingitage electrosurgery and very recently introduced lasers electrosurgery was given by d r snowell in the year 1891 an intentional passage of a high frequency waveform or current through the tissues of the body to cut coagulate desiccate or fulgurate the tissues to achieve a controlled surgical effect how it works is current flows through a small cutting electrode produces high current density rapid rise in temperature cells directly adjacent to the electrode are destroyed due to the permanent or temperature increase here are the different surgical electrodes or cutting tips that comes in the box of electrosurgical unit each tip has its own role and should be carefully selected that which part of gingiva has to be excised cord alone may not be feasible to manage the gingiva removal proliferate removal of proliferated tissues over the prepared finish line or cavity preparation enlargement of the gingival sulcus and control of hemorrhage to facilitate the impression making what is the technique local anesthesia must be given appropriate grounding should be done electrodes must be completely seated into the handpiece during its use the cord should be electrode should be applied with a very little pressure and deft strokes with 7 mm per second for each stroke this is the electrosurgical unit which is present in the department of conservative dentistry and endodontics in subharti dental college and hospital a study was conducted by joseph et al which concluded that wounds by fully rectified filtered current in a healthy individual of adult males showed epithelial bridging at 48 hours and complete healing after 72 hours another study study by peter also showed that it takes up to 16 to 24 days for the gingiva to heal completely coming to the lasers which stand for light amplification by stimulant method of radiation types of lasers carbon dioxide adbm yag and the diode laser I will be discussing the diode laser, a semiconductor medium laser manufactured from semiconductor crystals using combination of aluminium, iridium, gallium or arsenic. Wavelength ranges between 810 nanometer to 980 nanometers. Emission mode used is pulsed. Application mode is a contact mode. Diode laser troughing the soft tissue to expose the preparation margins. occlusion view after troughing demonstrating full margin exposure and lack of bleeding a light body polyvinyl siloxane was expressed into the dilated gingival sulci impression was taken to capture the preparation margin subgingivally the subgingival margins could then be noted circumferentially on the preparations this is the picture of diode laser unit which is present in the department of periodontics and implantology in subharti dental college and hospital merit what are the advantages of laser reduce hemorrhage precise cutting reduction in bacterial load reduce stress and fatigue for practitioner and dental staff high patient acceptance for the treatment on the other hand the disadvantages include financial cost improper radiation to teeth and periodontal pocket by lasers can damage the tooth and root surfaces as well as the attachment apparatus at the bottom of the pocket a comparative study was conducted by fundal et al where he compared laser electrosurgery and scalpel he concluded advanced treatment modalities like laser and electrosurgery have advantages over the scalpel they have many disadvantages in relation to lateral heat damage and delayed tissue healing conventional scalpel treatment could be a better option in terms of precise incision line faster healing at a much lower cost and beneficial for routine surgical procedures like gingivectomy 
Finally, to conclude, as the definition of operative dentistry itself dictates that the restorations should maintain the physiologic integrity of the tooth in harmonious relationship with the adjacent hard and soft tissues. An accurate diagnosis of periodontal conditions, determination of biologic width, proper handling of the gingival tissues are crucial in planning of restorative treatment which will further enhance the general health and welfare of the patient. These are the list of my references. I would like to acknowledge our principal Dr. Nikhil Shivastav sir for giving me this opportunity to present my seminar. I would also like to acknowledge and thank Professor and Head of my department, Dr. Vinita Nikhil ma'am and also my guide for the seminar and Dr. Parul Bansal ma'am, my co-guide for the seminar. Last but not least, I would also like to thank my beloved seniors and my batchmates for their constant support and help throughout my seminar. You can do it better when you can see it better. Thank you.